You're listening to Tarazi Tuesdays with the Bible is Literature. Hi, this is Father Mark Bulos, and you are listening to Tarazi Tuesdays with the Bible as Literature podcast. This week, Father Paul notes that the subject of the biblical text is determined by the story's content and not by the sensibilities of those hearing the story. In Genesis chapter 34, the rape of Dinah, typically emphasized in Western scholarship, is not the main point of the chapter which instead condemns her brother's abuse of the covenant of circumcision as an implement of mass murder. I am happy to introduce Father Paul on the Bible as Literature podcast, Tarazi Tuesdays. In this chapter, beginning with the animals, if a man steals an ox or a sheep or kills it or sells it, he shall pay five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. He shall make restitution. If a thief is found breaking in and is struck so that he dies, there shall be no blood guilt for him. But if the sun has risen upon him, there shall be blood guilt for him. Notice the accuracy of this sets of law. They are unbelievable. If the stolen beast is found alive in his possession, whether it is an ox or an ass or a sheep, he shall pay double. But we haven't finished. Because Western civilization always, okay, will accept the animals as part of our society. But don't tell me that the trees have a soul and if we cut them down and so on. That's not what the Bible is saying. And you don't need to go to a Native American to teach you that. Although it would help to realize how wisdom is wisdom. And let me go over these verses. When a man causes a field or vineyard Field is a Adama that has been worked by a human being. This is the famous Sade. Or a vineyard to be grazed over and lets his beast loose and it feeds in another man's field, he shall make restitution. When fire breaks out and catches in thorns so that the stacked grain or the standing grain or the field is consumed, he that kindled the fire shall make full restitution. For us to realize what's going on, I would recommend that we go and live for a few weeks, not more than that, because we weren't able to stand it, with the Amish, where whatever happens, even to a house, they all congregate together and help. Because ultimately, your property is not your property as though you were the owner, the king, the Malik. Because in the Bible, there is one king and thus ultimately one shepherd. And that's the importance of this passage about the damages that are done to nature and even more than that. Let's go to verse 7. If a man delivers to his neighbor money or goods to keep and it is stolen out of the man's house, then if the thief is found, he shall pay double. In other words, any element that you use to live slash survive is part of the deal. 
And then in verse 9, I like this expression, which is translated as every breach of trust. Let's hear it in the Hebrew. The bar pesha. Pesha, remember, it's that word that is used in the prophets as being the ultimate sin because it's the revolt against God as the one who takes care of you. Pesha. You have it very early in the first book of the prophets in Isaiah. Sons have I reared, and they, Pasheru, they revolted against me. But already we have here another example that you can use to make the people understand that Dabar is not the eternal platonic logos. Imagine translating this word as referring to Jesus Christ. No. Dabar means the matter at hand, the subject matter, the subject we are dealing with. And if this subject is a subject of Isha, you are revolting against the rule that has been put by God, you have to pay for it. And it continues until verse 14, where we hear, and if a man borrows anything of his neighbor and it is hurt or dies, the owner not being with it, he shall make full restitution. Notice the precision, it's unbelievable. But if the owner was with it, he shall not make restitution. If it was hired, it came for its hire. Okay, so you are responsible not to lose anything that was put in your trust. And then before going into the larger, what we can refer to as moral or religious laws that have to do with what we call the religious part. Actually, in those times, as I keep repeating, the society and the religion was the same. So we should use the expression socio-religious. But before that, we have two verses that deal with the rape of a virgin. If a man seduces a virgin who is not betrothed and lies with her, he shall give the marriage present for her and makes her his wife. Now, I'm inviting you here to go back to my comments on Genesis 34 that is used in Western society to speak about the rape of Dinah. It is not about the rape of Dinah. It is about the misbehavior of her brothers when they use the covenant of circumcision through which they made the people of Shechem as their own siblings according to the covenant of circumcision in Genesis 34 but they used it to kill them all that is the topic of the chapter that is why it ends with the comments of Jacob to his two eldest sons not in conjunction with Dinah but in conjunction with the shame in which they are going to put their entire family or clan in relation to the people among whom they are living. Now, Father Paul, what do you say about rape? 
I'll discuss it with you when we have the subject matter. But in Genesis 14, you have the application of this rule, which is part of the divine law. Now you have the following verse. If her father utterly refuses to give her to him, he shall pay money equivalent to the marriage present for virgins. But let's go back to Genesis 34. There, the father accepted. But if not, then the person will have to pay the marriage present for virgins. But he loses the woman. In other words, he doesn't get anything and thus it is a punishment for him. Now, you would like to Invite me to lead a retreat in your parish on these two verses. I'll accept gladly. For the time being, make note of what the text is saying and also my comments. First and foremost, it is the text that is our reference. The Bible as Literature is a production of the Ephesus School Network.